OK, let us start. The second speaker is Mr. Kazuki Yamamoto from Kyoto University. The title of his talk is Finite Size Scaling in a Non-Hamishan XXZ Spin Chain. So, please. OK, thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me a chance to talk in this excellent conference. Uh, today's talk is mainly based on this paper, uh, which is impressing physical air to be. OK, uh, let me uh, go to my self-introduction briefly. Uh, my research interest is uh, mainly uh, relying on uh, condensed matter physics and particularly in uh, strongly uh, strong correlation physics. And recently, uh, I'm also interested in ultra cold atoms in open quantum systems. And in today's talk, uh, I mainly focus on the conformal field theoretical approach in non Hermitian quantum systems. And uh, as a numer numerical uh, perspective, uh, I focus on the non Hermitian generalization of the density matrix renormalization group. Uh, these the collaborators on today's topics. Uh, I acknowledge my supervisor, Professor Nori Hakami in Kyoto University. And uh, I also thank uh, Professor Masahito Ueda and Dr. Masae Nakagawa uh, in the University of Tokyo. And uh, I especially thank uh, Dr. Uh, Masaki Tezuka in Kyoto University, who is one of the organizers uh, of today's conference. OK, uh, now let me go into the introduction. Um, introduction is constructed from three parts. Uh, first, uh, I explain uh, the non-harmitian quantum systems. And in the second part, I explain the numerical methods in uh, one-dimensional non-harmitian quantum systems, um, focusing on the density matrix renormalization group and its generalization to non-harmitian quantum systems. And then, in the uh, last part, uh, I explain the analytical methods to support numerical solutions in non-harmitian systems and uh, conformal field theory and beta ansatz and the renormalization group is explained. Okay, now I go to the first part. Uh, let me first uh, summarize how closed and open quantum systems are different. Uh, in closed quantum systems, uh, it is described by Hermitian Hamiltonian, of course, and uh, the system has real energy spectrum as an observable, and the system follows the unitary evolution. Uh, however, uh, in open quantum systems, it is coupled to dissipative environment, uh, also as a coupled to external path. Uh, as a result of these uh, external couplings, and the system has gain and loss, and the system uh, follows the non-unitary evolution. And recently, uh, another perspective of open quantum systems has attracted broad attention, uh, which is called the non-harmitian quantum systems. Uh, it is the effective description of open quantum systems, uh, as I show you uh, later. And uh, importantly, uh, the energy spectrum becomes complex valued as a result of this patient. OK, uh, to consider uh, non Hermitian quantum systems, uh, one important method is the quantum trajectory method. Uh, in this method, uh, we first prepare the initial state and if let it evolve with respect to the non Hermitian effective Hamiltonian. And the state jumps uh, as a result of this uh, jump operator L and repeats this, these processes. Uh, these types of evolution can be understood uh, from its ensemble average. Uh, when we take the ensemble average of quantum trajectories, uh, we obtain the Linda Blood Master equation, uh, which is uh, <coughs> the famous. Uh, famous equation to describe the open quantum systems. And the first term is the von Neumann equation, uh, which describes the Hamiltonian evolution. And the second term is the coupling to the environment. And then uh, we can uh, contain these two terms uh, into the Hamiltonian and obtain the non-Hermitian term 
and the junk term. Uh, these types of evolution de describe the quantum trajectories. Uh, so uh, as a result of uh, this lindov lad mastery equation, uh, the system uh, follows the non-unitary dynamics, uh, which can change the number of particles. Okay, uh, to consider no harm mission quantum systems, uh, one in, uh, strong motivation comes from the progress in experiments for open quantum systems, uh, particularly in ultra cold atoms. And I briefly explain the details. Uh, one example is uh, called the continuous quantum zin effect. Uh, this is a schematic figure. Uh, the state one has one particle at each side and uh, the state two has two particles at uh, one side. And uh, it decays uh, into the state three with no particles uh, with the rate gamma. Uh, then uh, intuitively, uh, when we increase the lattice depth, uh, the loss rate gamma increases uh, because uh, the molecules come closer and the dispersion rate becomes large. Uh, however, uh, this is the result of real experiments. Uh, as shown in this figure, uh, when we increase the lattice step, the observed loss decreases. Uh, so uh, this types of counterintuitive effect uh, is called the cont continuous quantum zin effect. Another example uh, comes from the superfluid mode transition. Uh, induced by this patient. Uh, as shown in this figure, the interference pattern of superfluid uh, becomes smeared as we increase the dissipation and the superfluid phase goes into the mod phase as a result of dissipation. So uh, these uh, experiments can be in a strong motivation to consider open quantum systems and in today's talk, uh, we mainly consider the no harm mission quantum systems theoretically. Okay, uh, to analyze such no harm mission quantum systems, uh, there are a lot of numerical methods, but uh, in today's talk, I mainly focus on the density matrix renormalization group study uh, in one dimension no harm mission quantum systems. Okay. Uh, to consider no harm mission uh, decimetric renormalization group, uh, we first summarize the D DMRG in harm mission quantum systems. Uh, as you have already know, uh, the prototypical example is the whole gain gap in Heisenberg spin chains. Uh, this is the figure obtained by uh, Stephen White in 1993 as a result of the uh, DMRG calculation. And uh, uh, simple question. Ah, uh, okay. So when you say one dimension, it's one plus one d. Yeah, one plus one d. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, as shown in this figure, uh, for spin one case, the gap uh, tends to a finite value as we increase the system size, and uh, for spin one half case the gap tends to zero as we increase the system size to infinity. And uh, this DMRG result uh, successively uh, described the uh, analytical uh, calculations, uh, analytical solutions uh, done by Holding. And this uh, gap is called the Holding gap. Okay, uh, then uh, I summarize the Hermitian DMRG algorithms. Uh, the principle of Hermitian DMRG is the variational ansatz to optimize the state. Uh, this is very important. And uh, the eigenstates of the dense matrix is truncated according to the magnitude of the corresponding eigenvalues. So uh, uh, as we can see in this figure, uh, this figure shows the uh, relative error of the energy uh, with respect to the exact results and the DMRG calculations. And uh, this axis shows the kept states M. And we can see that relative error of the energy monotonically decreases uh, because uh, it has the variational ansatz. And uh, the number of kept states is increased. 
and uh, we can say monotonic uh, decreasing. And then uh, now we con uh, we want to consider uh, how to generalize this DMRG algorithm to no Hermitian quantum many body systems. Uh, to consider such uh, no Hermitian generalization, uh, we first uh, have to summarize how no Hermitian quantum systems are described, uh, which is different from the uh, Hermitian quantum systems. Uh, important point uh, is that uh, in no Hermitian quantum systems, the right and the left eigenstates are different, and uh, the energy spectrum becomes complex valued. So, uh, for example, uh, in in the construction of partition function, uh, we have to choose uh, the right and the left eigenstate are the bra vector and the ket vector, and this is called the pi orthogonal basis. So, uh, to construct this partition function, uh, the normalization condition from the right and the left uh, eigenstates and the completeness condition from the right and the left eigenstates have to be uh, satisfied. And then, uh, as we can see, uh, the naive, uh, the intuitive uh, generalization of the MRG algorithms uh, is that uh, to choose uh, these types of densimetrics and uh, truncate the eigenstates according to the magnitude of the densimetrics. But uh, this mechanism has a significant problem because uh, the eigenvalues in general become complex valued. Uh, so uh, the variational principle breaks down. And then uh, the intuitive generalization breaks down and we have to choose another types of density matrix. Uh, can I ask one more question? Yes. So here you're saying that there is the left and the right eigen stage. Uh, so that yes. uh, this energy Hamiltonian is diagonalized double. So is it always possible or is there such a condition that uh, some here H is just some maybe arbitrary matrix? Uh, so can one always diagonalize in this way or like okay, what I mean is can you find a Always, it is uh, the uh, complete is the eigen left and right eigen states. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can always construct this uh, completeness condition from the right and the left eigen states. Always, yes. Yeah. So um, now we want to consider the non Hermitian generalization of the DM DMRC algorithms. Uh, the uh, first of all, the answer was given by uh, Shil Professor Shilovec in 1990s. Uh, but uh, as the variational principle breaks down in no harmonious systems, uh, they considered the numerically accurate density matrix to uh, well describe the target state. Uh, so uh, by considering these types of uh, density matrix, uh, which is constructing from only the left part and the right part, uh, this becomes Hermitian and no complex eigenvalues occur. And they uh, conducted a lot of numerical, uh, numerical tests, uh, for example, in reaction diffusion processes and uh, in non Hermitian Latinian liquids and vortex uh, physics and uh, non Hermitian Latinian liquids and flux spinning and uh, a lot of uh, other studies have done, and they showed that uh, these types of density metrics works well uh, to describe the ground state energy, uh, energy gap, and the correlation functions, and other uh, many other physical quantities. <clears throat> and they import uh, importantly, uh, they also showed that uh, this this choice is superior to the other types of density matrices, uh, such as uh the one only constructed from the right eigenstate so uh important point is also uh, point, uh also pointed out and in no harmonious systems no variational principle uh exists 
So uh, this is the uh, grand state cal calculation of no emission DMRG. And we see that uh, the convergence of the energy can be non-monotonic because and, uh, there is no variation of principle. But uh, Professor Schulbeck showed that uh, this choice is, uh, is the best to describe the uh, grand state. Uh, in no emission quantum systems, and numerically, uh, the best choice. Can I ask one more question? Yes. Uh, sorry, oh, sorry, I have many basic questions. So here, energy is complex. So yes. what do you mean by ground state energy? Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, in this system, uh, uh, in general, in no emission quantum systems, the eigen energy becomes complex valid, but in this system, it becomes uh, real, as you see. Uh, but uh, as I'll show you later, uh, in our study, we consider the grand state as the smallest real part of the energy. And uh, this uh, numerical uh, algorithm works, works well because these types of this matrix well describe the target state not have to be the grand state. So uh, when we target one state and uh, try to get the eigenstates according to this density matrix, uh, we can uh, well describe the target state. Okay, so uh, did I answer your question? Uh, yes. yes, I will, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, then, uh, this is the end of the uh, numerical introduction part. Uh, now I go into the, the analytical uh, introduction. Uh, okay, uh, in one dimensional quantum systems, uh, there are a lot of analytical methods uh, which can support in, uh, numerical solutions. And here uh, we consider the conformal field theory. Uh, in CFD, uh, it describes the universal properties of critical phenomena, and CFD is constructive, constructed from conformal symmetry with uh, translations, uh, rotations, and uh, scale transformations, uh, which is the dilatations. And the, the last one is the uh, so-called special conformal transformation. And uh, the underlying algebra is the Viasoro algebra. Uh, it satisfies this equation. And here, LM is the generator of the conformal transformation. And most importantly, uh, C, uh, this coefficient C is called the central charge, and it gives the classification of the universality class. Uh, for example, in condensed matter physics, a unitary CFD uh, often appears, and uh, for example, in C equals one half, uh, it gives the Ising model. And uh, when C equals one, uh, it describes the Tomonaga Rittinger liquids. Okay, uh, in conformal field theory, uh, we can introduce the primary field uh, by this transformation. And then uh, by using this transformation, uh, we obtain the correlation function and uh, the critical exponents delta plus and delta minus appears at these parts. Uh, here, uh, delta plus and delta minus is the uh, uh, famous conformal dimensions. And uh, of course, uh, it gives the critical exponents uh, of the correlation functions. And then uh, by using these primary fields, uh, we can construct the primary states. Uh, it is uh, defined by this equation. And here, uh, the state zero uh, is defined as the uh, eigen eigenvector with the zero eigenvalues of Ln. Uh, for n, uh, which is equal or more than one, minus one. And then uh, for L0, Ln, and L minus, minus N, uh, we see that L0 has uh, the eigenvalue delta plus, uh, which is called the highest weight. And when N is more than zero, uh, it gives uh, zero eigenvalues. And for L minus N, uh, we can construct uh, secondary fields, uh, which is called the conformal descendants. Uh, the famous example is the uh, SU2 uh, spin operators, uh, 
which uh, follows the level one uh, SAT Katsumudi algebra. And uh, as a result of this construction, uh, we see the uh, famous conformal tower uh, structure. Uh, this is the basic mechanism of conformal field theory. Okay, uh, now we explain the non Hermitian generalization. Uh, in non Hermitian uh, systems, conformal field theory also appears. And uh, in, in recent uh, few decades, a non unitary CFT has been actively studied. Uh, in non unitary CFT, a negative central charge uh, naturally appears. Uh, this uh, central charge C becomes negative. And uh, by using the conformal dimensions, uh, we can construct the effective, so called effective central charge. And uh, the finite size scaling of entanglement entropy is given by the effective central charge. Uh, sorry, uh, here we focus on the entanglement entropy in no Hermitian systems. Okay, uh, the famous example is the Yanli edge singularity. And uh, in this uh, phenomena, uh, we see the true central charge is negative, but the effective, effective central charge is positive. And it gives the entanglement entropy scaling. Uh, important point is the right and the left ground, ground states are identical, though the system is non harmonious so a uh, natural question is that uh, how to generalize the entanglement entropy uh, to the regime where the right and the left eigenstates are different uh, here we call it the no Hermitian entanglement entropy and it, quite recently it is reported that uh, it is very natural to use the biorthogonal basis uh, which i told you in the previous slides and then uh, some researchers have found that the, uh, the finite size scaling of entanglement entropy is given by the true central charge uh, in this way. So uh, uh, exa examples are given, for example, in, uh, for example, in no Hermitian Sushirka Hero model. And in this case, uh, the entanglement entropy uh, had the finite size scaling by the negative true central charge at critical points, and it is uh, well investigated in this figure, uh, in this paper. Uh, I note that only few studies have given for these types of no Hermitian entanglement entropy, and uh, there are a lot of uh, unknown uh, phenomena or uh, structures in this uh, in this no emission fields. Uh, so, okay. What do you mean by uh, here when since the uh, entanglement entropy is negative, uh, probably yes. that is just a von Neumann. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, I think okay. it's a uh, von Neumann type. Von Neumann type. Yes. Then, what do you mean by it is negative? Uh, this concept. I mean, yeah, if yes, it's yes. Something strange, then it definitely is possible, but physically, what do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, this, I think this is the von Neumann type, but yeah, that's it. Uh, maybe uh, it can be positive as a result of uh, the uh, not uh, the constant term, uh, not shown, but uh, in some parts, uh, this uh, entanglement entropy becomes uh, negative, uh, I remember. But uh, yeah, I, I know what you're saying, but uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I, I have not considered about it, um, but it is scaled by negative two percent of charge. And yeah, I have to, uh, I have to consider uh, what happens um, in the region, yes. I, I have also have a question. Yes. Did you also lose the strong subadaptivity? Uh, sorry, Matt? Did you also lose the strong subadaptivity? Strong, strong subadaptivity. 
Uh, do you mean lose? Yeah. Uh, yeah, lose. Yeah, lose. Uh, strong subjectivity. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I, I don't, I, I have not heard of the words. Uh, yes, sorry, I don't have clear answer. Okay, because I guess that you should have uh, inverse the inequality because now your integral answer becomes negative. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, yeah, uh, in this case, the entanglement entropy becomes negative and... Uh, so I guess I you think, also lost yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. subjectivity. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, okay. I, I, yeah, I have understood understood what what you're saying and uh so yeah in this sense, i guess that the, your mutual information is also negative yes uh that's right that's right so um yeah i i i have to uh i have to confirm what is happening uh, in this regime uh, maybe it is uh written in this in these papers uh precisely and i have to check them uh later yeah Sorry, uh, I don't have to be answer right now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, now I, I go to the last part of the introduction. Uh, the first one is the better answers. Uh, okay, better answers and. The philosophy of the better answers is that uh, if young Baxter equation is satisfied uh, the, uh, for the uh, scattering matrix matrices, uh, the many body scattering is decomposed into the products of two body scatterings. And then uh, in non Hermitian quantum systems, uh, recently a uh, few studies have given uh, to generalize the better answers method to non Hermitian quantum systems. And for example, in no Hermitian Hubbard model, uh, the beta answers equation is given here. The, the interaction U becomes complex valued. And as a result of this complex uh, complexity, uh, the quasi momentum distribution uh, is uh, lies in the complex plane. Okay. Uh, Another uh, analytical method uh, which uh, we want to consider is the renormalization group analysis in non Hermitian systems. Uh, here I give you some examples. Uh, for example, in non Hermitian sign quantum model, uh, this is the uh, renormalization group flow with respect to the Tomonagaru Tinja parameter and the real potential and the imaginary potential uh, in the cosine term. Uh, we can see that this patient enhances superfluid correlation uh, because the flow goes from the multi insulator phase uh, to the Tomonagaru Tinja liquid phase. And uh, this is in stark contrast to the Hermitian case because uh, in Hermitian case, uh, the multi insulator phase becomes stable uh, for uh, these regimes. Uh, another example is the no Hermitian condo effect. And as shown in this figure, uh, with respect to the real and imaginary condo coupling, we can see the anomalous, anomalous renormalization group flow, uh, which shows the reversion. And it means that no hometicity suppresses the condo effect. Uh, these types of anomalous flow uh, is unique to the no hermitian quantum systems and uh, which is uh, actively studied in recent years. Okay, uh, now uh, we want to go into the model uh, of today's talk. Uh, we want to uh, consider uh, the universal properties of one dimensional non Hermitian quantum systems. Okay, uh, here we revisit the quantum trajectory method. Uh, in this quantum trajectory, uh, the single uh, trajectory uh, in each dynamics is described by the non hermitian effective Hamiltonian. And uh, in our study, uh, we introduced the non hermitian effective Hamiltonian uh, by the two component both Hubbard model with two-body loss processes. So the system 
a two component both Hubbard model has uh, two body lots of particles. And as, as a result of this dissipation, uh, these uh, interactions becomes complex valued. And uh, this means that the system has complex energy with decay. And uh, we now uh, have to clarif clarify uh, how to consider the ground state. Okay, uh, this is again the model, uh, one dimensional two component bose hubbard model with two body loss. And here uh, we consider the strongly correlated regime and apply the second order perturbation theory. And then uh, it is well known that uh, we can map this bose hubbard model to the uh, XXC model, but in this case, it becomes no harm mission. And here uh, we emphasize that uh, this coefficient becomes negative uh, in this case. And uh, now uh, we want to see the longest surviving state in the long time limit uh, because the system, uh, the state decays due to dispersion. And uh, we want to see the longest surviving state. So uh, this means that we have to see the largest imaginary part of the energy. Uh, because the energy becomes always uh, negative, uh, which we can prove. And uh, we see the smallest uh, ne uh, negative, uh, smallest amplitude of the negative imaginary part of the energy, and it corresponds to the largest imaginary part of the energy. Uh, and for the sake of simplicity, uh, we map this model uh, to uh, the one with positive coefficients. And we consider these types of no harm uh, XXZ model. Uh, here, uh, the anastropy parameter becomes complex, complex valued as a result of dispersion. And uh, the longest surviving state in the original model corresponds to the ground state with the smallest real part of the energy, though uh, we skip the detailed derivation. And uh, we want to, uh, we think for universal properties uh, such as uh, obtaining uh, correlation functions and finite size scaling analysis in conformal field theory and uh, in no hermitian DMRG. Okay, uh, now uh, this is again the model. And uh, to, to consider, uh, to analyze this no hermitian excess XFZ model, uh, the field theoretical approach uh, can be an efficient method. And one of such uh, efficient method is called the uh, bosonization approach uh, to consider the long distance behavior. Uh, the main philosophy of bosonization is to bosonize uh, this Hamiltonian uh, with respect to the bosonic field uh, with commutation relations, uh, which is shown in this way. And uh, we easily obtain these types of spin operators as a result of bosonization. And then uh, we can see that this non Hermitian spin model is mapped to the non Hermitian sine Gordon Hamiltonian. Uh, in the last term, uh, the cosine, cosine term becomes complex valued uh, as a result of this complex valued coefficients. And in the first, in the first term, uh, it is the no Hermitian Tomonaga Luttinger Hamiltonian with Gaussian type, uh, which is shown uh, in this way, um, but it has complex valued uh, parameters as a result of this patient. <clears throat> so, uh, for example, if we consider the massless regime, uh, which uh, where the cosine term uh, becomes ir irrelevant, uh, the model is described by the no Hermitian. Uh, Tomonaga Luttinger Hamiltonian, and which we use, uh, for example, in the uh, CFD part or the uh, field theory, uh, field theoretical approaches. Okay, uh, then I go to the results. Uh, the results is constructed from three parts. Uh, the first part is the correlation functions. Uh, which I'll show you later, but they have uh, two types of correlation functions as a result of no hermeticity. And then uh, in the second part, I give you the exact results. 
for the better answer solution and for the finer size scaling analysis in conformal field theory. And in the last part, uh, I explained the no harm mission DMRG results of the no harm mission exercise spin chain. Okay, uh, now I go to the correlation functions. Uh, to consider correlation functions, uh, we applied the uh, uh, no harm mission to monogamy teacher model uh, by assuming that the model is in the massless regime. And uh, this is the no harm mission to monogamy teacher model. And of course, uh, this model is no harm mission. The right and the left eigenstates are different. And uh, as you can see uh, easily, uh, the expectation values uh, can be uh, four types uh, because we have to choose right or left uh, eigenstates for broad vector and right or left eigenstates for the uh, ket vectors. And uh, two, two, two correlation functions in such four types are uh, the same and we can uh, choose two types of correlation functions. Uh, the first one is called the biorthogonal correlation functions uh, because we use the biorthogonal basis. Uh, it is constructed from the path integral formalism. And uh, this is the partition function. And sorry, in the, uh, in the second line, uh, this is the action. And uh, we can calculate, uh, calculate it by using the matrix M. Uh, here, M is given by this two times two types matrix. And we can see that uh, the complex values of Tomonagali teacher parameter K tilde and uh, complex valued velocity of excitations U, uh, U tilde, um, appears in these parts. And uh, because uh, this matrix becomes complex valued, uh, to ensure the convergence of the Gaussian integration, uh, these uh, restriction, restrictions are uh, uh, applied to uh, this calculation. And then uh, finally, uh, we obtained the by orthogonal correlation functions. Uh, this is the sequence one CFT, which I show you uh, in detail later. And uh, for density density correlation functions, we obtained the uh, uh, Fermi liquid type uh, X. Uh, square inverse type uh, correlation functions and uh, anomalous Tomonaga uh, Rutinger correlation functions. And uh, we can see uh, the single particle correlation functions as shown uh, in this way. And the important point is that uh, they are described by the complex valued Tomonaga Rutinger parameter. Okay. Uh, this is uh, okay, then I go to the uh, second types of uh, correlation functions. Uh, here we re-parameterize uh, this tomonaga teacher hamiltonian but it's the same as in the previous uh, slides. And here uh, we choose only the right eigenstates. And then uh, by, cons uh, by considering the harmonic fluid approach, uh, we obtain the ground state wave function uh, of right eigenstates. And here, uh, the state uh, phi k uh, is defined by the Fourier uh, transformation of phi x. And then uh, we can easily obtain also the eigen energies of the system with uh, respect to the particle hole excitations. And uh, we see that uh, the eigen energy become com complex valued. Okay, uh, now uh, we can obtain the right state correlation functions by using this ground state wave function. And we can calculate uh, in this way. Uh, here, uh, the coefficients becomes uh, K phi uh, of one type. And uh, in the, uh, as the second type, uh, K, uh, another critical exponent K theta appears. Uh, but uh, K phi and K theta 
are re related to the complex value tomonagaru tensor parameter uh, through the real part or the real part of the reciprocal of k tilde. So uh, we conclude that uh, both correlation functions of uh, right state type and by orthogonal types are characterized by the complex valued Tomonagaru teacher parameter. Okay, uh, now I go to the exact results. Uh, in the following, we want to answer the question. Uh, we want to consider the uh, question, uh, how to construct a CFD approach for the complex energy spectrum. Uh, to consider uh, such questions, uh, we first uh, construct a Bethe equation uh, with twisted boundary condition for the sake of simplicity, of, sorry, for the sake of convenience. And this is the uh, no Hamisha XFC Hamiltonian with complex values, uh, anisotropy parameter. And this is the uh, Bethe equation. And then, uh, we can take the logarithm uh, by applying these types of uh, parameterization and we obtain the beta equation. Now here, uh, the spin rapidities lambda j uh, are distributed uh, in the complex plane and ij uh, is the quantum numbers, uh, mu uh, gives the anastropy parameter and l is the lattice length and n uh, is the number of down spins. Okay, now we solve this equation. Uh, this is the better equation, and we we can easily obtain the distribution function from this equation. Then, uh, by solving this equation uh, with the help of this uh, distribution function, we obtain the energy difference uh, with respect to the uh, one uh, of finite size L and the and the one uh, with infinite system sizes. Uh, this is the results. Uh, here, uh, these coefficients, uh, velocity of excitation to so U tilde, and the susceptibility, chi tilde, and uh, the spin stiffness, ds tilde, are all given uh, by the complex valued coefficients. Can I ask one more basic question? Yes. Uh, also, integrable system or lead the integrable system or? Uh, sorry, sorry, I can't hear you well because ah. of the noise. Uh, could you come closer to the mic? Is it uh, integrable system? Ah, yes, integrable system. Even uh, so, non Hermitian does not like change the integrability, just the. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, in, in this case, uh, we can obtain always obtain the better equation with complex valued parameters. So the integrability always holds, but uh, it is different. The better equation has a solution or not. So uh, the, the integrability always holds, but it is not clear it has a solution or not. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, uh, then uh, we can solve it uh, we, uh, from this energy difference. <clears throat> uh, we obtain uh, important results. And it is the finite size scaling formula for the non Hermitian Hamiltonians for the complex valued energy spectrum. Uh, this is the results. And by comparing uh, these two results, uh, we see that the central charge is given by one. And as uh, the velocity of excitation, uh, you tell that becomes complex valued. This is the complex generalization of the C equals one conformal field theory. Okay, uh, then I go into the final size scaling analysis in CFD. Uh, we first apply the harmonic fluid approach again. And then uh, we can diagonalize the Tomonaga teacher Hamiltonian uh, by using the quasi particle operators A and A bar. But we note that A bar is different from A dagger. Uh, and uh, though uh, A bar is not A dagger, uh, they satisfy the commutation relation. 
And these types of communication regulation naturally appears in non permission systems. So uh, by using this formulation, uh, we obtain the excitation energy in a finite system and conformal dimensions. Uh, here we uh, give the results for the periodic boundary conditions. Uh, this is the results. Uh, delta N showed the uh, particle number and delta D uh, is the current and N plus and N minus characterizes the particle hold excitations with no negative integers. And uh, we obtain the conformal dimensions and uh, periodic uh, energy spectrum for the periodic boundary conditions. And uh, we easily see that this is again the complex generaliz generalization of the C equals one conformal field theory. Okay, <clears throat> and then uh, by the comparison with the beta ansatz, we obtain the exact uh, tomonaga Luttinger parameter, exact complex valued tomonaga Luttinger parameter. Uh, here, uh, we show, uh, we depict the uh, results for the ratio of k theta and k phi, uh, they are given by the real part of k tilde or the reciprocal of the real part. And uh, we see that uh, when we increase dissipation, uh, dissipation is given by the imaginary part of the anisotropy parameter delta gamma. It deviates from one uh, because uh, it becomes uh, one in the Hermitian limit. Uh, in the Hermitian limit, because uh, the system uh, has no uh, internal degrees of freedom, uh, the system is described one tomonaga Luttinger parameter, one real tomonaga Luttinger parameter. But in this case, it becomes complex valued, so it deviates from one. Okay. And uh, finally, uh, in the last part of the analytical solutions, we want to make arrangements for no Hermitian DMRG analysis. Uh, of course, as you know, uh, the periodic boundary conditions uh, has, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the open boundary conditions has uh, better uh, convergence uh, than in, in the case of the periodic boundary conditions. And it becomes uh, very significant in no Hermitian systems becomes, because uh, the convergence problem uh, becomes very severe in no Hermitian systems. Uh, so uh, we want to uh, apply the open boundary condition uh, in the no Hermitian DMRG calculation. And we have to obtain the excitation energy in a finite system and conformal dimensions in open boundary conditions. Uh, because, uh, uh, sorry, uh, for chiral to managa liquids. Uh, the results are given in this way. And uh, because the system is chiral, uh, they have only one uh, particle number, uh, sorry, uh, only the particle number excitations. And uh, only uh, one uh, particle hole excitations. So uh, by using this relation, we obtain two types of energy gaps in a finite system. Uh, the first one corresponds to the particle hole excitations, uh, which we call the spectral gap. Uh, the spectral gap is given by uh, the the energy spec uh, uh, energy gap. Uh, with delta n equals zero and n equals one uh, by using the uh, velocity of excitations, uh, which is obtained from uh, this equation. <laughs> and the second one uh, corresponds to the particle number excitations, which we call the spin gap. Uh, it is given by uh, delta n equals one and n equals zero, which we obtain uh, this types of relation. Okay, uh, then uh, we are ready for the no Hermitian DMRG calculation uh, because we have obtained the complex valued monogal Luttinger parameter and the complex valued velocity of excitations from the uh, spectral gap and the spin gap, which is easily obtained from the no Hermitian DMRG analysis. Okay, now I go to the uh, numerical results. Uh, we here revisit the uh, main philosophy of the non-Hermitian DMRG algorithms. Uh, for the truncation of density matrix, uh, for the truncation of eigenstates of the density matrix, uh, we have to choose uh, the 
these types of uh, density matrices, which is constructed from the left part and the right part. And we here apply this algorithm to non Hermitian quantum systems in open quantum systems. Uh, can I ask one more question? Maybe. Uh, yes. Uh, so, yeah, this also appeared in the previous slide. So, yes. in the here non Hermitian system, I don't know how do I define observable, but uh, for example, there is some something you can calculate, and uh, that, that those are. Uh, complex value. So yes. Uh, if you compare yeah. with the experiment, uh, so how so that means like a yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So uh, the answer is uh, the observable is given uh, by the energy spectrum with decay rate. So uh, the imaginary part of the uh, energies uh, show the system has decay. So uh, we can see in real experiment, uh, the energy spectrum has some decay rates. And uh, for example, in uh, correlation functions, uh, these types of bi-orthogonal correlation function is just a mathematical generalization. But uh, in real experiments, uh, we can prove that uh, these types of uh, right state correlation function appears and it becomes the observable. And as you can see, uh, this is always the real uh, real correlation functions because k phi and k theta are given by the real part. So in real experiments, for example, in correlation functions, uh, you have to observe these types of right state correlation functions, not the bi-orthogonal correlation functions. Okay, uh, let me go back to, oh, okay, this part. Um, so uh, in detail, uh, in the DMRG calculation, uh, we first calculate the spin gap and the spectral gap with no Hermitian DMRG and obtain the complex valid Tomonaga Lutetia parameter and the velocity of excitations you tell them. And we then compare them with the better answers results. Okay, uh, this is the results for uh, K5, now which is given by the reciprocal of the real part. And uh, this is the results. Uh, here, uh, the horizontal axis shows the dissipation and the violet line shows the small, uh, small uh, result, uh, small real delta gamma, and uh, the red line shows the large real delta, delta gamma in the anastropy parameter. And uh, we here took the system size 130 and uh, we took the kept states up to uh, 200. Uh, okay, uh, we can see that, uh, sorry. Uh, the color figure, uh, color plots showed the no emission DMRG results and the gray dotted uh, plots showed the exactly, exact results. Okay, here, uh, the no Hermitian DMRG and the beta answers results are very well, as you can easily see. But uh, at this part, uh, discrepancy becomes large. Uh, this is because uh, the finite size effect of the model approaches the transition point as a result of dispersion. Uh, so uh, as I show you in the next slide, uh, the system goes, uh, can go into the uh, strong coupling fixed point as a result of this patient. Okay, uh, then this is the results for other parameters uh, for K theta, which is the real part of K tilde, and the velocity of excitation uh, is real part and it's imaginary part. Uh, these lines show the same uh, real delta gamma, uh, gamma as in the previous slides, and we uh, fixed the uh, lat lattice size to 130. Uh, here, uh, no Hermitian DMRG and the beta answers agree well again. And uh, for large dispersion, uh, the discrepancy becomes so large, and uh, this is due to the finite size effect that the model, model approaches the transition point. And uh, uh, we can also see that the finite size effect for K tilde is small, uh, is smaller uh, compared to. Uh, utility, that of utility. And uh, I think 
uh, this types of finance as effect has already reported in the Hermitian limit. Okay, uh, finally, I note that the renormalization group study for the non-harmitian sign Gordon model. Uh, it is given by another research groups in, uh, in, Ger in Germany, and uh, it was published in this paper. Uh, this is the uh, phase diagram with respect to that monogamy tensor parameter and the uh, uh, amplitude of dispersion. And we can see that when we increase the dispersion rate, uh, the system goes into the strong coupling fixed point for large dispersion. And uh, this type of renormalization group flow is consistent, as I already told you, uh, with the no hamishan DMRG results, because uh, when uh, we increase the dispersion rate, uh, the system goes into the strong coupling fixed point and the final size effect becomes large. Okay, uh, this is the final slide. Uh, we have also obtained the non hamishan DMRG results for the correlation functions. But in this case, the system size is limited to 100 uh, because uh, there is a significant convergence problem. And uh, we have obtained the uh, sufficient convergence for up to system size is 100. Uh, from field theory, uh, the right state correlation function is given uh, in this way, as I already told you. And, uh, by applying these types of correlation functions, uh, we can perform the fitting for uh, two types of parameters, K5 and C2. Okay, uh, this is the results for two parameter fitting with K5 and C2 in correlation functions. Uh, the horizontal axis shows the dispersion. And uh, these lines show the same uh, parameters uh, as in the previous slide for uh, real delta gamma. And uh, we see that uh, the no hamishan DMRC results with color plots and the beta others results with gray plots are qualitatively the same at the final size scaling results of the excitation spectrum. But of course, uh, as you see, uh, the fitting accuracy is low. And this is due to the mainly due to the effect of the edges because the system size is limited and we have to use open boundary conditions to ensure the sufficient uh, convergence. And uh, because uh, the system has severe convergence problem due to non harmonicity, uh, we cannot perform large uh, system, um, we cannot perform the non hamishan DMRG for very large system sizes, but if the algorithm uh, is improved, uh, we can uh, make better uh, calculations. And I think uh, those results uh, well fit uh, with the exact results. Uh, all in all, non hermitian DMRG agree well uh, with the analytical results. OK, uh, this is the end of my talk. Uh, here's the summary. Uh, we have considered the non hamishan XXC model uh, by starting from the two component both the Hubbard model with the body loss and obtained two types of correlation functions of uh, by orthogonal type and right state type, which, uh, which is the observable. And uh, we have shown that uh, there exists a universal scaling by a complex value to monogamy parameter. And in CFD analysis, we have obtained the final size scaling for the, for the ground state energy and for the excitation energy in a final system and showed that the system had the central charge C equals one. And uh, the, this final size scaling gives the complex generalization of the C equals one conformal field theory. And finally, we have obtained the no emission DMRG results, which agree well with the analytical results and uh, this discrepancy comes from the uh, final size effect for large dispersion. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. So, are there more questions or comments? Uh, I have a question. So yes. In the, for example, in this graph, so you compare with the two results. So, which one is then uh, more? I'm not sure whether it's proper, but uh, which one is 
Uh, sorry, uh, this gray, gray dotted line showed the exact results. So uh, this is the uh, exact results and uh, color plots showed the non-Hamitian demerge results. Oh, I see. Okay. So when you say exact results, it's a better answer. And uh, no, I mean, that is just exact. No, there is no like an error. Uh, yes, uh, just exact. Okay, thank you. There is a, uh, in the chat, there is a question, maybe. Masaki, can you read it? And, uh... Oh, okay, I, I can see the chat. So, and yeah. uh, I can see, uh, and uh, the question is, uh, is the central charge in the energy scaling, the true central charge or the effective central charge? Uh, the answer is the true central charge. Uh, here, I show you the results and uh, see, two central charge becomes one and uh, the coefficients become complex valued. So uh, I, I know some results uh, in, for example, uh, in the case of yang Yang's singularity, uh, they have effective central charge, but in this case, uh, the central charge is given by the true central charge with complex valued coefficients. Okay, sorry, my uh, microphone was off for a minute. Okay. Okay, uh, Chente. Why your two point correlators has a singularity at the x equals zero? Uh, sorry, I, I can't close the chat and just, uh, sorry, uh, uh, that. Uh, I, I cannot close my chat. Uh, okay, uh, uh, now I close the chat. Uh, could you ask me again? I say, why, why your two point correlator has a singularity at the x Sing equals to zero? x equals. Um, x is small, you mean? Yeah, maybe small or zero. Zero is a singularity. Yes, time. singularity, but. Uh, this types of correlation function naturally appears in Tomonagal literature model uh, because uh, because uh, I think because it's, it's your wave, wave function also has a singularity. Wave function has a singularity at x equal to zero. Yes. Is it um, correct? So uh, let me go back. Uh, wave function. Yeah, uh, this is the wave function, and uh, is there a singularity? Or I yeah, uh, 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 we have uh, assumed assumed some uh, convergence, and uh, for the convergence of the grand state wave function, because uh, it has to be normalized, uh, we have uh, restricted. Uh, the system to the regime where uh, these types of relations holds. And I think there is no singularity in this wave function. Yeah. The white correlator has a singularity. Oh. So, uh, I think you are uh, looking at long wavelength or long range uh, behavior. Uh, large uh, distance compared to the lattice uh, constant. So, uh, uh, as, 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 the as, as, the, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Long distance. So, yes, yes. Uh, we have seen the long distance behavior by uh, applying the uh, bosonization, bosonization theory. And uh, as a result of uh, the effective uh, bosonization, uh, we have seen the uh, sing singularity at x equal zero, I think. Thank you. Okay. Okay, any more questions or comments? Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker again. So this is the end of the morning session. Thank you.